Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Across the Park podcast. It's the instant reaction to the sacking of Frank Lampard. Um, we're recording Monday evening, just after five o'clock, and it's been about an hour, an hour or two since the since the news broke on Sky Sports News. In typical Everton fashion, we still haven't actually uh, announced it ourselves, so it is officially or unofficially official that Frank Lampard has been sacked by Everton. Um, I'm going to come straight to you, Milsey. Thoughts, instant reaction to the, to the news? Um, it was coming, wasn't it? it, it it's something that, that's been brewing. So it, it's not like you know, we've done the Carlo one, didn't we, a couple of years ago, and that was a shock. Um, he, he, he who shall not be named after him, that, that was no real shock. But the most disappointing thing for me is, is we're here again. We're, we're doing another Across the Park podcast show with a, a manager leaving Everton Football Club for whatever reason. That, and... I think the bigger picture is that we'll, we'll get into that in, in future podcasts. I imagine we'll, we'll try and keep it to, to what's happened today. But the, the bigger picture almost can't be ignored is that we're the structure of, of the club. Um, I think the culture of the club arguably made a, a, an impossible um, job for him to do over a long period of time. We, we got the bounce. We, we got what we needed as a fan base through Frank Lampard this time last season where we were very, very, very fractured. And division was, I, don't, I can't think of a stronger word if I could, I'd use it, but but the fan base was divided and he came in and, and he overly reached and, and he overly reached to the, to the staff and the players. You, you could see what, what he'd done for Alex Wobie and Anthony Gordon and, and Richarlison, what, what he'd done for those, those three players in particular under him at the end of last season were, were night and day to what they had been previously. It, it just became, I think as soon as the window closed and at the end of August, and, and you've seen how short we were, and, and you're worried about the culture. And we know with those players, yes, there's, there's four, five, six new players in that dressing room, but the core remains the same. And, and these players down tools, but that's not the reason he's been sacked. He, he's been sacked because the results have been really, really poor under him. And, and I don't think he's blameless. I, I don't think, by me saying that, I, I do feel a little bit sorry for for, for him. Um, it, it's not a manager that I wanted. I, I don't think the manager, want, the fan base wanted this manager sacked in an aggressive way, in a way which we have done previously. The ground weren't angry to him, but he's not blameless and and, and the, the past few results, I mean, judge his shoulder. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more in, in, in the sentiment that I guess of, of um you know, being appreciative of the impact that Lampard has, and it was a, it was an impact. It may not have looked like it on the surface of it, with you know an extraordinary amount of points, but it definitely has an impact on morale, as you said. It, it has an impact on a, a few players that made a big difference towards the end of the season, um, and he, he didn't manage to carry that momentum into that se- into into this season. When I say momentum, it was you know staying in the Premier League in the end was our version of fi- finishing the season on a high. And, and he's not really been able to pick that up. Um, as as you said, the start, I think we'll go into more of a post mortem of, you know, where it went wrong. You know, the signings, obviously, or, or lack of signings, lack of quality signings being one of them. Certainly not replacing Richarlison has been the one that most of the media have pinned on. You know, being the the biggest contributing factor. But it's got to be said, and as you've just mentioned, then he, he's not picked up enough points and enough wins. Um, enough points certainly, and I. I you know, I, I um, highlighted it, or I have done in our last few podcasts, that a lack of in-game management, which we, we did see fairly early on, to be honest. Um, not not really having a plan B. How often do you say that about managers these days? You know, and in general, not having a plan B. That that's the difference between managers that stick around the clubs. I think and manage to stick around the clubs for a, a longer period of time, and those that don't, it's having a having something else, a different page to turn to when when things are maybe not going well and. And, and since, you know, we've been on this run, it, there hasn't really been a sign of us turning things around, it's got to be said. Um, even in the games where we've been in front, we've never looked like we, we were going to stay in front. So, ultimately, you know, regardless of recruitment, poor recruitment, you know, all the factors around the boards and the pressure on the boards, it is without doubt the results that have that have, that have been the, um, the, the main factor here. Yeah, I think it's a good point what you've touched upon there in, in relation to, you know, plan A and plan B. Um, again, you, you you might disagree with this, but 
I, I got to a point with Lampard where I no longer knew what, what plan A was. I, I, don't, I, don't, I get the impression mm. that he didn't know what plan A was. Now, he, he came into the football club, I think his, his first game was Brentford in the cup, and, and he played a, a three at the back. And I thought, OK, if that's what he's going to go to. Then I'm watching mm. a three at the back, and I'm thinking he, he doesn't want to play a three at the back. And then we go to a 4 3 3 in, in, in last season, and he switches it back again to, to three at the back. We, we've done that three or four times this season. So, so I'm talking last season, he had half a season and he switched it three or four times. He's done the same this season. For me, Judge, I, I honestly, I, I didn't see what plan A was. Yeah, I think there's two things in play, so to speak, here. One is he's torn between trying to get the best out of the squad of players that he's got, which I think he believed was playing three at the back. And when I say that, I mean, your Tarkovsky's, Cozy, Godfrey, Mina, all... Well, probably say some of the stronger players we've got in the squad yeah. uh, and in that centre back position now. Um, so I think that's one factor as a manager, as a person, you think, how do I get my strongest players who can maybe influence the game on the pitch? And the only an way to do that at times was to play five at the back or, or three at the back, whichever way you, you call it, playing three centre backs. And then four, three, three was, or, you know, it, it's four, three, three, maybe the way the sky might set it up, but we seen it more as a four, five, one, didn't we? Yeah. And, and that's the position, that's the formation that he's played, that he plays at Derby, that he plays at Chelsea, that I think he wants to play and he feels more comfortable playing as a manager. And I think that's why we did see the two. And once we started struggling, you know, as we've seen at the Man City game, where he, he felt like he had to go up to a back five just to, def to defend, that would give us a best, better chance of defending. And we've got a result. He's like, I better stick with that now. So... Yeah, I, I don't think he's um, he's really been sure what the best was for him or for the team. Uh, and ultimately, that's been part of his demise as well. Yeah, and I, I look at the signings that, that, that came in. Now, I, I don't know whether it, it will ever come out because transparency between club and fan base, it, it shouldn't be as transparent as maybe we, we as fans want it. But the signings that came in the door in the summer, I'd say two or three of them don't match any system that you've just spoke about there. I, I don't see how... A Neil Morpe or, or or a Dwight McNeil fit any of those systems because one of those systems is, is playing a, a a wing back system. The other system is not 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 playing a winger at all. Neil Morpe is 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 not someone I I think is a is a proven goal scorer. Now people can throw certain numbers at me that he had at at Brentford and things, but it just goes back to in that summer we had a bounce. Now, yeah, we, we, a lot of other fans maybe have looked at that and, and mocked it and, and said Ever Evertonians were, were celebrating and, and, you know, the scenes at Goodison, but, but it was a bounce. For what, whether, you, whether you agree with that or what, it was a bounce. You had the fan base on side. You were then able, and there's not many of these left, by the way, but you were able to sell an asset and you were able to press some sort of, not a reset button, but you could start to build what, what he wanted. He had the ability on paper to say that 50 million even if, even if I've got a little bit of it, because that little bit is what is up front, it's not going to be the players that, that are on the, the list. Or And I don't know. He, it, it's fair, it's such a grey area. He was either let down or he wasn't strong enough. And we've got we've got two of you judging on the screen at the moment. So Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, the female viewers have just doubled. I had, some, I had some issues there. I'm trying to get rid of the other one. I, was in my, uh, I, don't, I, don't, even, I don't even hear anything I said there. There we go. Yeah, I, I did. I, I caught. I caught some or most of it. Unfortunately, it, the the, um, the issues of recording at home kicked in there. With the dog wanted to go out and then <laughs> ends up moving my laptop and it and it um it, it got away from me. I, I did. I, I caught a bit of it. You might have to maybe summarise some of it. Yeah. The so, so just just to go back a little bit in, in time, I, I was saying that when you were talking about systems, I think the personnel that were brought in don't fit any of those systems you, you just spoke about. You've got a, both systems no, there. Uh, don't require, don't require a left winger. I think both systems didn't really require um, a Neil Morpe. It, it, it required someone who, who could score goals and, and either run the flanks or hold the ball up, and, and he can do neither. So my opinion there with Lampard is, is I think there's an element that he was maybe let down, but I also think the flip of that coin is, is was he strong enough to actually say, I don't want these players? Now, if it's, if it's neither of those and they were his players then I've got no sympathy at all, unfortunately, because that there's not many assets left for us to sell and bring money in. We managed to do it last season. And with that money, I think that was his that was his chance, albeit with or without help, to put his own identity on that team. And, and, and like I say, going back to what I said earlier, I didn't really see it. 
Yeah, it, it, I, I'd like to think we'll know at some point and that he's going to have the opportunity to speak out and maybe be, you know, be be a bit, you know, be honest about the situation. Now, you know, how honest he'll be in terms of the truth or whether it's going to be about protecting his own reputation, you know, who knows. But I'd like to think that we'll find out a little bit more about where them signings come from, whether it whether they were his signings, whether it was the case that, which is what I suspected, that he gave a certain profile to to, to Kevin Farewell and, and we maybe hadn't been able to to identify or we've maybe not been able to sign the, 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 you know, the first few players on that list and we're just getting further and further down the list and in the end it was like, we just need to get someone in. I, I find that somewhat hard to believe completely in the sense that I think if that was the case, we probably would have just got someone on loan, you know, rather than actually paying the 20 million. So I've got to believe, I've got to believe in my heart to heart somehow that Mopai was a player that Lampard was partial to signing. But again, who knows? Who knows? I mean, whoever whoever's decision it was, um, and in fact, you know, regardless of whether Lampard's won them or not, that's where Kevin Bellwell as director of football needs to be saying, hopefully, listen, <clears throat> that's not that's not a player that we're comfortable paying that amount of money for, and, and I'm not sure where it really is going to fit in. Yeah, and he, he, because if we if the more pay signing was one that either Kevin Farewell or Kevin or Frank Lampard or both of them wanted, then then why did he never play with Carver Lewin when he was fit? It's just oh, it's I, a difficult yeah. one. And it's, and he, dropped, on. he dropped him at every chance. If you if you look yeah. back, if you go over from when he first, I think his first game was the uh, the Merseyside derby. Every chance yeah. he's got um, to drop Neil Morpay, he's dropped him. And, and if you look at the flip side, like Dominic Calvert Lewin's got one goal and ten and been unfit for the other ten. Yeah. So, so really, what Neil Morpay should be playing a lot more to take take the pressure off Lewin. So it look it, it screams it does scream to me like there's elements of. Other areas of the club we've let him down, but just to focus on mm. on him, go, going back to the results, like, like those last five games or, or six, if you include the Bournemouth games before Christmas, you, oh. you're looking at. And if you if you include Leicester, there's four teams who've been bottom of the league and, and they've all beat us, and it, it's just got to a point now where he, he did become, unfortunately, for me, part of part of the problem the way he was setting us up and his his in game management and. Look, I, I, like I said at the start, I don't want to repeat myself, but I don't think he lost the fans. I, I don't think he did, but I think there's now an acceptance that it wasn't good enough. Yeah, I, I, exactly that. I, I, as you said at the start, it wasn't that the, the fans were, were baying for blood because the, the baying of blood has, has been more on behalf of the board or you know, directed at the board, so to speak. So I, I don't think that that was the case at all. However, I, I think everyone agrees in their hearts of hearts that it is the right decision. Um, ultimately, to, to part company. I mean, just just moving forward because again, we, we will continue to to go over this. And I think in, in future shows anyway. And, and to cut to the point here, you know, he's been sacked now. Um, I, my suspicion that is that that's been coming for the last week or so anyway. But they've been trying to mull over, you know, the, the possibilities of of replacements. Where does your if you have money? I start with the first question. If you have money. To, to put down on a bet on who the next ever manager is, who would it be? And the second one is in an ideal world, who would you like it to be? First question, um, first answer sorry, to the first question is I've just got this idea that that I, I've just got a feeling it'll still eventually be Moyes. And now, and now I think to get to Moyes, you, you may have to wait. Um, I don't think Moyes lasts the season at West Ham. And I, and I think if that's coming, which I think it was very close to happening on Saturday. I, I think there may be an element of Everton will perhaps wait for Moise. And mm. do you do you roll a dice and just give it to someone internally? Do you ask Paul Clements to stay and, and do a month? Do you ask Leighton Baines to? Do you ask Duncan Ferguson to come back and, and with a guarantee that he'll be the next manager if, if he sticks this one? I don't know. I've just got an idea that it'd be Moise. But for me, you need a firefighter. It's it, mm. the. the for me, we had these conversations privately and stuff, and I don't think that the right time for Everton to set a long-term plan is now, and, and we should. We absolutely should be eventually setting a long-term plan, so I'm contradicting myself here, and I just don't think the timing is right for someone to come in and say, here's my three-and-a-half-year plan. Someone mm. has to come in and say, here's my four-month plan, mm. and then you're, you're looking at a dice 
or an Allardyce or possibly a Bielsa? Nah, no, no. I, I, I think uh, I think you're right in in the, the notion that there's got to be two plans here. The, the the immediate one, which is to just get the the, the club stabilised and get us into a position where you know relegation is you know is off the cards. That that might take you know a couple of months. It might take a few weeks because you know not a few weeks. I can't see us getting six points of harsh on Liverpool, but. You know, I think there's a short-term job, as you say, and, and there's a long-term job. Whether the same person is able to carry both of those missions out um, is is another is another question. Um, I can't see Clement or anyone sticking around. I mean, there is a, I guess there is a notion that the reason why the club haven't announced it is that they have literally got a short-term plan that's ready to go, and they want to announce that alongside the sacking and say, look, this is the person yeah. who's taken over in the short term. Um, I, I can't see Paul Clement being the person who, who sticks around. I can't see any of them sticking around, to be honest. But if money is a factor, then maybe it does. Maybe the, the only people that go are Ashley Cole and Frank Lampard and the rest stick around. But it begs the question, why? What, why would you think that would make a significant enough difference to, to actually sack Lampard? So I don't know. It, it, it's, a very, it's a very, very confusing situation that the club haven't put nothing out. That, that's, that's for the start. You know, there's rumours that the players actually didn't find out from the club. They've only found out by hearing it on TalkSport or seeing it on Sky, which is typical. Um, <laughs> well, wow, world. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't be against that, a short-term, you know, short-term candidate coming in with the view of the club thought that they could get the right man in the summer, whether that's Moyes or whether it's someone else. I, I, I would actually be behind that. But the short-term candidate is, is a very, very difficult pick, I think. We can't go... If you're talking about toxic, toxicity mm-hmm. and, and maybe someone coming in who's just going to continue to divide the fan base, Lampa, uh, sorry, Allardyce is not the man. He can't be. There's too many people who would be so against that appointment. And, and look, at, I'm not going to argue whether he is the right man or not. I just... I, I, think there'll be, I think there'll be so many people who can't get on board with, with that appointment. Yeah. So I don't think that type of divisive appointment is is the one. Um, I don't think someone like a Dyke takes a, a small, you know, a small, a short term job. So I don't think he's going to be the pick. I can see Bielsa. I can see it for a number of reasons. The reason being that he will, he's the type of personality that would get that big man, you know, new manager bounce out of the players. Just so different to what Lampard was and what he represented. That you might get that short term bounce, and also you've got someone who who would be so um, determined to play in a certain way and and, to, and and he's very fixed in his idea of the way he wants a team to play that he could potentially have a long-term effect. My understanding is that the, the biggest hurdle behind us getting a BL set is he's you know, adamant on having a, a transfer policy and as in this is, this is what we've got to spend, this is who we can potentially bring in. He'll, he won't go anywhere and that's why he's turned down other jobs apparently where it's, it, the club doesn't seem too sure on the direction they're going. They're a little bit, again, indecisive at board level, which screams Everton, doesn't it? <laughs> who, who, are you gonna, who are you going to sit in front of him to convince him that, that, we're, that we've got a long-term plan? So, do, you, do you trust the, the club to make the right decision? I'll, I'll um, go first. I'll put it on your toes. I don't. I, I don't trust the club to make the right decision here. And, and it's, it's, it's past being on a knife edge now. You absolutely cannot get this wrong because the amount of games we have to win and the amount of fixtures we've got, is the, the odds are already against. If you look on the bookies' websites, Everton are favourites to go. You can't get it wrong. I don't judge you. I do not trust them to, to get it right. No, I, I don't think you can. You could you could trust them with any conviction. I don't think anyone could sit here and give you a, a good case, maybe apart from Kevin Thelwell, as to why the club should be trusted in this situation. I guess that the answer to that question is one that we won't know and and and. The reason I'm saying that is to answer that question, you'd need to know who is actually making the decision. Yeah. If, you know, the club came out and said, look, you know, we're, we're stewing, up, stewing over for the next week or so because we haven't got a game now until the 4th of February and the decision lies with Kevin Thelwell and his recruitment team, then I've got a little bit more belief that, that we might come up with the right candidate. Um, there were a few people not so long ago that re- released... Um, I guess some a narrative that the last manager and the last couple of managers have not been selected in an appropriate way, as in it's just been names out of a hat, or it's I like this person, I like this person. 
and 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 we just kind of got to it that way. If there's a proper process to it, and it's done in the way that we should be signing players, I mean, we, you you can you can kind of have a little bit of faith for that because the sign the signings, for example, of the likes of Anana was a good signing. I didn't see that coming. I think mm. many teams in the Premier League, Premier League were really looking at him. That that is a good signing, and if whatever process we've used to make that signing should be the same process we're using to, to try and sign a potential manager because he's a good fit, you know, on a number of levels. But if we've used the same process to sign the likes of McNeil and, and Morpai, then, you know, it, it, it's not. So we, we, we really are shooting in the dark as to, one, answering your question as to whether we can trust the club and, two, who the manager's going to be because it's so hard. Like in the past, we'd have went, oh, yeah, I can see him. I can see us putting this man because of X, Y, and Z. We don't know who's making the decision, and we don't know what the process is behind that decision. So, it, it, we really are clutching at straws, and and um, I don't think again, don't think anyone can answer your question certainly with any positive conviction. No, and, and look, I, th- I think we'll, we'll close out. I, I, I do want to ask you one question before we do close up. Before we get there, for me, Judgy, um waiting for the owner to speak is a lost cause. Waiting for the chairman to speak is now a lost cause. I think Kevin Thelwell's got to come out. He's got to sit in front of the Everton media team now, and he's got to talk. He's got he, he's he's got to earn the trust of this fan base now. No one, if, if Kevin Thelwell is somehow listening or watching to this, what I would say, without speaking for every Evertonian, is we, we're trusting you here, mate. We are absolutely mm-hmm. trusting you. Do not abuse this trust. You have to come and communicate now. You have to come out and say what has happened on your watch since you came here. Now I know you came here in February and March. And that says to me that you had it's obvious you had no say in the current manager. It, it wasn't your appointment. Maybe you've worked alongside him. Maybe you've helped him more than enough. Maybe you haven't helped him enough. Come out and speak to these fans. Let us know your vision. Tell us why we're hamstrung by finances. Just, just tell us. Be honest, because we know. It's your chance here to be the face of all this and come out and just say, look, the, what's going on in the stands is nothing to do with you. But what's going on the pitch is everything to do with you, and you and you've mm. got to get this right. And it starts for me judging with communication. Yeah, I'm I'm with you to to a certain extent, but also to a certain extent, I couldn't care less what he says. I, I want it's what he does that matters. So if if the next few days are a series of swift action and and clear communication and actions in terms of a new manager coming in, a series of of players coming and going. And it finishes, and we finish the next week or so with a clear statement of intent from Kevin Thelwell and the board. As this is the way we intend to go forward, I would sooner you come out in a week's time when when he's took action, because I don't want him spending the next two days working on a speech. Because we yeah. don't need a speech; we need we need clear and decisive action that's going to make a difference to the short term future of this club. So I'm with you in terms of I think that's a general action point for the board in general, but I couldn't care less what he says. I, I don't. I don't. I mean, have you? I haven't heard many directors of football in the Premier League or the world speak full stop. So I don't care what he says. You would rather see the actions rather than words for me. So let's see what comes next. I mean, I don't think the comms around the, the manager leaving are Kevin Fellow's responsibility, but finds in the next manager and giving the, the, the next manager the right support, whether that's financial or whether it's just sheer strategic support and, and work behind the scenes. That's absolutely his responsibility. And if he's not able to carry out that, then for his own professional integrity, he needs to walk away. Otherwise, so, he's never going to get a job in football because this, at the moment, as you rightfully say, rests on his shoulders. Yeah. All right, just, just to close it out, so I'll, I'll let you close it out. Um, for me, the, Frank Lampard's legacy as Everton manager is a look back and I, and I, and I think it was a, a very, very likeable person who, who tried his best and, and it just unfortunately wasn't good enough. Couldn't Couldn't say more than that. I think I think you you know looking at the stats he's just behind Mike Walker he, he's not he's not leaving with the the level of uh, hatred and bitterness that that Mike Walker carried with him when he left absolutely not far from it I think he's a very likable person he, he he definitely here for the right reasons in terms of he did care about the fans he cared about the club but he just didn't have the the substance to to back that up from from a from a managerial point of view and that's the top and bottom of it. So yeah, that 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 closes out. It's a say it's an instant match reaction. Just a quick plug from me. Please subscribe. 
Um, we've had a great few weeks on, on Across the Park podcast in terms of the contact we content we've got out there for everyone. We've had loads of feedback, which we really appreciate. Please click that subscribe button. Got so many people, as in like 20 or 30 times the amount of people watching our shows and listening than, than there is subscribers. So please subscribe. It's just a little click of that button underneath the video and it makes a massive difference to us. But that's our instant match reaction to the, the sacking of Frank Lampard. Hopefully there'll be another reaction in coming days to the new manager arriving or new signings, one of which we know will be Dan Juma. But hopefully there's more of that to come as well. But thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And we'll catch you all soon.